So over the last like three or four years, we've seen a lot of these laser diodes from companies like Otour, Sculptfun, Xtool, and even Atomstack. And in fact, Atomstack actually has the largest lineup of these machines. And in this video, we're gonna test out their most powerful. This is the Atomstack X or A, we'll get to that in a minute, 30. So we're gonna get into the benefits as well as a few of the drawbacks. And most importantly, is this the right one for you? So let's get the general features and specs out of the way. For the most part, this is pretty standard for all the other laser diodes you've seen on this channel, more than likely the ones you've seen online. This is an open frame design, meaning there is no enclosure. So that is a big benefit of a CO2 machine. So if you are gonna be running this, you definitely wanna keep in mind, this is going to have a lot of smoke and a lot of fumes. So you wanna have really, really good ventilation. But in general, this is a pretty solid design. So for the most part, it's an all metal construction. The movement is from V-wheels as well as belts. So these aren't quite as nice as some of the linear rods or linear rails we've seen on newer machines. In terms of control, they give you this like external controller, which honestly, I don't really even use. It doesn't give you controls to like jog the machine, which would be super helpful if it did. But if you do decide to use the little like micro SD or TF card, I think is what they call it, you can actually upload your design directly to the machine, then run it from here. So you don't have to connect it to a computer whatsoever or even have it connected to Wi-Fi, which is a really big benefit. But more than likely, you will connect it to a computer. So you have a USB port here right at the very top. On the safety side of things, you have your standard suite. So if this moves around or if there's something interfering with the laser, it will automatically shut off the power. And most importantly, you have this emergency stop button that you can hit at any time and it will kill the machine. Now this is a 36 watt diode laser. It actually has six individual diodes inside, which I guess they are all six watts to get you that 36. And they all fire here down at the bottom. Now, as always, as you get increased power, you're definitely gonna be more concerned about flare ups and charring. It also comes with a full air assist system. That's actually really hard to say. And they give you this compressor to make it work. On the work area side of things, pretty standard. It's 400 by 410 millimeters. Usually most of these machines are going to be in that range. And then to actually control the machine, again, you can use a computer. I use Lightburn, which is my favorite software. And it's actually the one you're gonna be seeing me doing my test files from here in a minute. But Adam's Tech also has an app. I really don't play around with the apps a ton just because I'm a lot faster using Lightburn, but there is that option if it's important to you. Now, like most of the other companies, Atomsec is also offering some accessories to add onto it. They initially give you this metal cutting mat to put underneath that's gonna protect your work surface, but you can also get their version of a honeycomb bed, which is this guy right underneath. This is called the this is called the F2, and those were clamps that just dropped down off of it. And there's both benefits and drawbacks to this, and we'll get into it in a minute. But they also have a rotary that I don't have set up. And then one accessory that I haven't seen any of the other companies have is a camera. Specifically, this is a light burn camera. So this is made to connect right here at the top, and it gives you a feed into Lightburn, the software, to be able to tell how you are going to engrave and cut things out. Now, I did set that camera up and it works for the most part, but in general, I still just like to use the laser itself, especially the trace mode that you can do inside of Lightburn to be able to do all of my positioning. And honestly, most of the time that's actually faster and it's usually more accurate as well. But there is a camera option if that's something you've seen in bigger desktop CO2 machines that you can pick up. Okay, so some of the big pros of this machine. Atomstack of all the machines does the best job in terms of filtering out light, but still giving you the ability to see what's going on. With other machines like O2 or even X2, Tool, you're gonna have this like acrylic or plastic that's going around that filters most of it out. But this is actually fully enclosed except for this window right here in the front. And this is reflective, so it blocks out the majority of the light, but you can still see the laser beam as it's going around. That's nice because you definitely wanna see the beam when you're doing positioning and even when it's running, but it also does a good job protecting your eyes as well. But with all of these diodes, I would not rely just on the eye protection built into the machine. They provide glasses that you'll definitely want to wear anytime this is running. Another pro is the quick ability to focus this. So it's just a knob on the front and this entire thing will move up and down and they give you this guy to figure out the distance to focus. So this part at the bottom can be removed and it gives you two ways to do it because you can remove this piece from the bottom if you just wanna have the laser fully revealed. So you can either have this flat, if I had material on there, and then drop this down or you can turn it on its side and it's gonna give you the right distance as well. It's quick, you don't have to do any measuring, it's easy. I do like what Xtool does a little bit better because they have a lever that is actually built into the laser module itself because I could definitely see myself misplacing this 
versus having something connected directly to the machine. Now, recently, my favorite part about Atomstack is the fact that they provide you a compressor and it's part of the package. This is not something you have to add on like with other companies. And this compressor is the nicest of the ones that I normally use. Most of the times, the other compressors are just ones you'd find just off the shelf and they kind of bounce around all over the place. And this one's nice. It's got a dual pump inside as well as these little rubber feet and it really doesn't move around when it's running. And I also like this because you can adjust the airspeed of this machine. So you can turn it all the way up and then dial it all the way down because if you're doing something really light, like even paper or cardstock, you don't want to have your compressor on much at all because it's going to blow it all over the place. But if you're doing some pretty heavy duty cutting, you definitely want the compressor turned all the way up. And I was really impressed in my testing, even when I was running this very slow at high power, way more power than I actually needed to cut things through. I wasn't getting any charring whatsoever. So this does an excellent job at that. And the other benefit, you power this from the same cable that you also power the machine. So you only have one plug going into an outlet. Okay, so let's talk about some of the cons of this machine. The first one actually isn't a con of Atomstack itself, just what happens when you get a stronger laser. Your laser beam is going to get thicker as you add in more of these diodes. Again, you got six of those laser diodes. So this is gonna be a thicker beam versus a machine that is only four diodes or two diodes or even like one diode, which is just five watts. Now you can see I did do some full picture engraves and it does a fair job. So you're not losing a ton of detail, but if you want the best that you can get, you're gonna wanna lean towards a lower powered machine that has a very, very thin laser dot. Now, mechanically, one thing I do wish they would upgrade is just the fact that you're using these V wheels as well as belts versus a more solid movement system like metal rails or even linear guides. Luckily, there's not a lot of force that this has to go through since it's just moving this through the air, but over time you will find that the belts are going to stretch out. So you're gonna have to retighten them down. I just find that some of the other ways to move this around are a little bit more robust. And also one thing that could be improved is the fact this is only using two stepper motors. So you have one right here and this is connected by a rail underneath to the cable on the other side. And that is what moves this back and forward. And then you have another stepper motor at the top that is moving this side to side. Now, I don't think I've seen any diode lasers that have a stepper motor on both sides, but I definitely see bigger CO2 lasers and that just gives you more stability. But again, I haven't really seen many problems with this, but know when you're getting up to the higher speeds that this can run, the line might be a little bit more wobbly than you're thinking. Now, kind of a pro and a con, are the accessories. So this work bed is nice in the fact that you have a solid layer underneath that's versus a honeycomb that is gonna be open because it's honeycombs. So you still would have to put some type of thin metal sheet underneath it. But on the con side of things, you do have to assemble this yourself. And like each of these rows is individual. And then basically every other one is pretty flexible. So I did find myself moving my material when I didn't mean to, just because I bumped one of these and things did get out of sync. Now it does have these rails along the side, which allow you to use this clamp so that you can clamp down your material. But you do need to be careful not to have the clamps go too far out to the sides because these bottom wheels can hit that clamp and it would just stop your machine, which I definitely had happen a couple times. Now, overall, the rotary is fairly nice for what you get with these diode machines. They're gonna give you an option to have rollers as well as a chuck that would be more like a lathe. But in general with the rotaries, especially with these machines, I always find the positioning and everything kind of wonky because there's no way to lock the rotary to the machine. You have to have everything exactly positioned right and it's really easy to get it skewed. And that's why I pretty much always use a rotary with a larger CO2 machine that can lock down in place because I know I'm not going to lose my position. But if you go into it knowing that you're gonna have to fine tune it and be careful, you definitely can engrave cylinders and it's gonna do a good job. And again, coming back to the camera, it's great that they offer it. You can actually buy cameras directly from Lightburn. Then you have to install them yourself. This is one that already comes with the clamp, but I still just like to use the trace feature with the laser itself in low power mode to figure out where I'm going to position stuff. And that kind of brings me with my con with these accessories. They definitely feel like accessories, so they're just add-ons to the machine itself. It would be nice to see them a little bit more integrated, whether this is just one solid piece that comes with your machine or somehow the camera can be integrated into the machine itself versus just clamping it on the front. You really don't see those nice complete systems until you get into the higher end on the CO2 world, especially when you're looking at desktop CO2 units like the most recent X-Tool P2 or even a cheaper version like the Ohmtech Polar back there. And that brings me to the strangest con of this machine. And that's the fact that if you look this up, it might have a different name and it might have a different color because you could be checking this out at atomstack.com or at atomstack.net and then the various resellers they have online. And those two places, this will be either the X30 or I think the A30 and it's going to be silver 
or blue. And I've actually been contacted by both companies. And this is kind of weird at the end. It is the exact same machine, but depending on who you're looking at, they might be a reseller versus like the parent company itself. And maybe that's just their strategy to have a bunch of different ones out there. So you always find it. But aside from that, it, that doesn't really impact the machine whatsoever, but it could potentially impact ongoing support just in who you're communicating with. So just keep that in mind. I've got both of those linked down below in full disclosure. Those are all affiliate links. Feel free to use whatever you want. And it doesn't have to be my link. Now let's get into some of the comparisons. First, we're going to compare it to the previous version of this machine. Uh, that was the Atom Stack X20. That was their 20 watt version. I'm using my standard test and this is something that I do directly through Lightburn. If you're interested in using this yourself, there's a link down below that you can download it and then run it from Lightburn. What's nice about these is you can pretty much run this on any material. What are the best settings for engraving as well as the best settings for cutting? When you're taking into account, you want it to run as fast as possible, but you also want it to have the best quality. Now here are the pictures of the X20 and the X30 side by side. But what I found is this is a pretty nice way to tell in terms of power. And again, coming back to that thicker line, you can also tell that the X30 is going to be thicker than what you're finding with the X20. But the more interesting comparison is going to be with the X tool and their 40 watt unit. Now that machine will actually get a 10 watt laser module and you'll also get a 40 watt laser module. So it's not just one, but with X tool, it also is going to come with an increased price. At the time of this recording, X tool is at 1800 bucks for that combo. And this is right at 1150. So a good bit cheaper. And in general, I always find with Atom Stack, the value for what you get is great. Now with X tool, you are going from 36 to 40 watts and overall the build for X tool I do find is nicer, but is it worth that extra 700 bucks? I'm not sure. Now, one benefit that XTool does have is their software is more built out. You can still run it from Lightburn and all the other things that you can run with Atom Stack. But now that XTool is moving more into the CO2 market, like with their P2, they really are building out that software with integrated projects and settings. And I find that using their software now is really nice and I can get a lot of the stuff done versus with this, I pretty much am gonna stick to Lightburn, which is an additional purchase. Now, where this thing gets really interesting is when you compare this to a machine that Atom Stack is coming out with, but they're putting it under a completely different brand name. Again, coming back to like, is this .com or .net, but it is an Atom stack. It is actually from IKEA, which I don't even know if that's how you say it, but it's got a super unique feature I haven't seen on any other machines in that the laser module itself can switch between using four diodes or eight diodes. So you can get really nice power and then switch it back, I think, and be able to get a thinner line for engraving. Now I haven't reviewed that or even have that machine yet. So that will be coming in the future. But for now, who is this for? If you're looking to get into lasers and you're wanting to get one that doesn't just engrave, but you're gonna do a good bit of cutting, but you don't wanna look at a CO2, Atomsec is a great option, especially for the price. Even if you don't wanna go over a thousand bucks, you can step down that power to 20 watts. Now I would say if you are a business and you're gonna be cranking out lots and lots of products. I would lean towards stepping into the CO2 world just because they're gonna be more robust and fully enclosed. But if you're more of a hobbyist, maybe you're selling a few things on Etsy, but you're not gonna be running it all the time. Diode lasers are still a great option. Now I'd like to know between this and the Xtool D1, which one would you get? All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.